He smiled when he saw it. The game was progressing beautifully. Famine was there to meet him. No, Famine was there for another reason, wasn't he? George Bear was waiting on shore to kill him. George Bear isn't in his room. He's not with Oliver Highsmith or James Whitehead either. Damn it to hell, he's loose. The alarming message went out over the two-way radio. Samson and I had been watching the south side of the hotel for close to eight hours, and we were sure George Bear hadn't come our way. We heard Andrew Jones's concerned voice on the radio. Remember that all of the four horsemen are agents like ourselves. They're capable and deadly. Let's find Bayer right away and be extra alert for Jeffrey Schaefer. Schaefer is the most dangerous player. At least we think he is. Samson and I hurried out of our rented sedan. We had our guns out, but they seemed inappropriate at the beautiful and serene resort. I remembered feeling the same way nearly a year before in Bermuda. Bear didn't come this way, Samson said. I knew he was concerned that Jones's people had lost famine. We wouldn't have made that mistake, but we were seen as backup, not the primary team. The two of us walked quickly up a nearby hill that gave us a perspective on the manicured lawns rolling down toward the hotel's private beach. It was getting dark, but the grounds near the hotel were relatively well lit. A couple in bathing suits and robes slowly walked toward us. They were holding hands, oblivious to the danger. No George Bear, though, and no Schaefer. How do they end this thing, Samson asked. How do you think the game ends? I don't think any of them knows for sure. They probably have game plans, but anything can happen now. It all depends on Schaefer, if he follows the rules. I think he's beyond that, and the other players know it. We hurried along, running close to the hotel buildings. We were getting nervous and concerned looks from the hotel guests we passed on the narrow winding sidewalk. They're all killers. Even Jones finally admits that. They killed his agents, and then they didn't want to stop. They liked it. Now maybe they plan to kill one another. Winner takes all. And Jeffrey Schaefer hates to lose, Samson said. Schaefer doesn't ever lose. We've seen that already. That's his pattern, John. It's what we missed from the start. He doesn't get away this time, Sugar. No matter what, Schaefer doesn't walk. I didn't answer, Samson. Schaefer wasn't even breathing hard as he made it to the white sand shoreline. George Bayer stepped out of the black Ford Mustang, and Schaefer watched for a weapon to appear. He continued to walk forward, playing the game of games for the highest stakes of all. His life. "'You bloody swam?' Bayer asked, his voice jovial, yet taunting. "'Well, actually, it's a fantastic night for it,' Schaefer said, and casually shook water off his body. He waited for Bear to move on him. He observed the way he tensed and untensed his right hand, watched the slight forward slant of his shoulders. Schaefer took off a waterproof backpack and pulled out fresh, dry clothes and shoes. Now he had access to his weapons. Let me guess. Oliver suggested that you all gang up on me, he said. Three against one. Bear smiled slyly. Of course. That had to be considered as an option, but we rejected it because it wasn't consistent with our characters in the game. Schaefer shook his hair, let the water drip off. As he dressed, he turned halfway away from Bear. He smiled to himself. God, he loved this. The game of life and death against another horseman, a master player. He admired Bear's calmness and his ability to be so smooth. His playing is so bloody predictable. He was the same way as an agent, an analyst. George, they sent you because they thought I'd never suspect you'd try to take me out by yourself. You're the first play. It's so obvious, though. A terrible waste of a player. Bayer frowned slightly, but still didn't lose his cool, didn't let on what he felt. He thought that was the safest attitude, but it told Schaefer his suspicion was true. Famine was here to kill him. He was sure of it. George Bear's cool demeanor had given him away. No, nothing like that, Bear said. We're going to play according to the rules tonight. The rules are important to us. It's to be a board game, a contest of strategy and wits. I'm just here to pick you up according to plan. We'll meet face to face at the hotel. And we'll abide by the throw of the dice, 
Schaefer asked. Yes, of course, Jeff. Bear held out his hand and showed him three twenty-sided dice. Schaefer couldn't hold back a sharp laugh. This was so good, so rich. So what did the dice say, George? How do I lose? How do I die? A knife? A pistol? A drug overdose makes a great deal of sense to me. Bear couldn't help himself. He laughed. Schaefer was such a cocky bastard, such a good killer, a wonderful psychopathic personality. Well, yes, it might have occurred to us, but we played it completely straight. As I said, they're waiting at the hotel for us. Let's go. Schaefer turned his back to Bayer for an instant. Then he pushed hard off his right foot. He sprang at Bayer, but Bayer was more than ready for him. He threw a short, hard punch that struck Schaefer's cheek. Rattled and maybe even loosened a few teeth, the right side of Schaefer's head went completely numb. Good one, George. Good stuff. Then Schaefer headbutted Bear with all of his strength. He heard the crunch of bone against bone, saw an explosion of dizzying white before his eyes. That got his adrenaline flowing. The dice went flying from Bear's hand as he reached for a gun or some other weapon. It was tucked in the back of his waistband. Schaefer clutched Bear's right arm. Twisted with all of his strength and broke it at the elbow. Bear shrieked in pain. You can't beat me. Nobody has. Nobody can. Schaefer screamed at the top of his voice. He grabbed George Bear's throat and squeezed with superhuman strength. Bear gagged and turned the brightest red, as if all the blood in his body had rushed to his head. George was stronger than he appeared, but Schaefer was speeding on adrenaline and years of pure hatred. He outweighed Bear by twenty pounds, all of it muscle. No, listen to me. George Bear wheezed and gasped. Not like this. Not here. Yes, George. Yes, yes. The game is on. The game that you bastards started. Tally ho, old chap! You did this to me. You made me what I am. Death. He heard a loud, crisp snap, and George Bear went limp against him. He let his body fall to the sand. One down, said Schaefer, and finally allowed himself a deep, satisfying breath. He snatched up the fallen dice, shook them once. And hurled them into the sea. I don't use the dice any more," he said. He felt so damn good, so fine. God, how he had missed this! The main line of adrenaline, the incomparable thrill. He knew it was likely that the Jamaica Inn was being watched by the police, so he parked the Mustang at the nearby Plantation Inn. He walked at a quickening pace through the crowded Bougainvillea terrace. Drinks were being served while the wretched song "Yellow Bird" played loudly. He had a nasty fantasy about shooting up the terrace, killing several dickhead tourists. So he got away from the crowded area immediately, for everybody's sake, but mostly for his own. He strolled the beach, and it calmed him. It was quiet, restful. The strains of calypso music gently weaving through the night air. The stretch between the two hotels was eye-catching, with plenty of spotlights, sand the colour of champagne, thatched umbrellas placed at even intervals, a very nice playing field. He knew where Oliver Highsmith was staying, in the famous White Suite, where Winston Churchill and David Niven and Ian Fleming had slept once upon a time. Highsmith loved his creature comforts almost as much as he loved the game. He entered through a white picket fence gate at the property line of the Jamaica Inn. He broke into a soft jog. He wanted to run, to sweat. He was feeling manic again. Playing the game had made him too excited. He was in serious trouble again. He could lose the game right now, lose everything. That required a change of strategy, didn't it? He had to be more daring. Even more aggressive, he had to act, not think too much. The odds against him were still two to one. Schaefer burst in the front door of the suite, and there was Oliver Highsmith freewheeling his chair across the floor. Oliver, it's you, Schaefer said. I do believe I've caught the dreaded Covent Garden killer. 
You did those killings, didn't you? Fancy that. Game's over, Oliver. At the same time, Schaefer thought, watch him closely. Be careful with Conqueror. Oliver Highsmith stopped moving, then slowly but rather nimbly turned his wheelchair to face Schaefer. A face-to-face -face meeting. This was good. The best. Highsmith had controlled Bear and Whitehead from London when they were all agents. The original game, The Four Horsemen, had been his idea, a diversion as he eased into retirement. Our silly little fantasy game, he always called it. He studied Schaefer, cold-eyed and measuring. He was bright, an egghead, but a genius. Or so Bear and Whitehead claimed. My dear fellow, we're your friends. The only ones you have now. We understand your problem. Let's talk things through, Geoffrey. Schaefer laughed at the fat man's pathetic lies, his superior and condescending attitude, his nerve. That's not what Georgie Bear told me. Why, he said you were going to murder me. Hell of a way to treat a friend. Highsmith didn't blink, didn't falter. We're not alone here, Jeff. They're at the hotel. The security service team is on the grounds. They must have followed you. And you, and Bear, and Whitehead. I know all that, Oliver. I met a couple of Crackerjack agents down the hall, shot em dead. That's why I have to hurry up, can't tarry. The game's on a clock now. Lots of ways to lose. We have to talk, Jeff. Talk, 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 Schaefer shook his head, frowned, then barked out a laugh. No, no, there's nothing for us to talk about. Talk is such an overrated bore. I learned to kill in the field, and I like it much more than talking. No, I actually love it to death. You are mad, Highsmith exclaimed, his greyish-blue eyes widening with fear. Finally, he understood who Schaefer was. He wasn't intellectualizing any more. He felt it in his gut. No, actually, I'm not insane. I know precisely what I'm doing. Always have. Always will. I know the difference between good and evil. Anyway, look who's talking. The rider on the white horse. Schaefer moved swiftly towards Highsmith. This isn't much of a fight, just the way I was taught to perform in Asia. You're going to die, Oliver. Isn't that a stunning thought? Still think this is a bloody fantasy game? Suddenly, Highsmith jumped to his feet. Schaefer wasn't surprised. He knew he couldn't have committed the murders in London from a wheelchair. Highsmith was close to six feet and obese, but surprisingly quick for his size. His arms and hands were massive. Schaefer was faster. He struck Highsmith with the butt of his gun, and Conqueror went crashing down on one knee. Schaefer bludgeoned him a second time, then a third, and Highsmith dropped flat on the floor. He groaned loudly and slobbered blood and spit. Schaefer kicked the small of his back, kicked a knee, kicked his face. Then he bent and put the gun barrel against Highsmith's broad forehead. Please, Jeff, no. You can't just kill me. We can still help each other. I'd love to stretch this out, but I really have to dash. He inserted the barrel of his gun into Highsmith's pulpy right ear and fired. The gunshot blew Conqueror's grey matter all over the room. Schaefer's only regret was that he hadn't been able to torture Oliver Highsmith for a much, much longer time than he had. Then Schaefer was running away, and suddenly he was struck with a realization that actually surprised him. He had something to live for. This was a wonderful, wonderful game. Samson and I sprinted toward the secluded wing of the hotel, where Oliver Highsmith had his suite. There had been gunshots, but we couldn't be everywhere at once. We heard the pistol reports all the way on the other side of the Jamaica Inn. I wasn't prepared for the bloody massacre scene we found. Two English agents were down in the courtyard. I had worked with them both just as I'd worked side by side with Patsy Hampton. Jones and another agent, in addition to a team of local detectives, were already crowded into Highsmith's suite. The room was abuzz. Everything had turned to chaos and carnage in a burst of homicidal madness. Schaefer went through two of my people to get here. 
Jones said in an angry voice, strained with tension and 